10 Inventions That Queen Elizabeth II Was Older Than Queen Elizabeth II was the longest reigning queen in British history, having governed for more than 70 years. What exactly did she witness during the course of her long life? What new developments and technologies did she see? The world was very different when the queen was born on April 21, 1926. Ballpoint pens, calculators, and even microwaves weren't commonplace as they were still getting used to cars and weren't yet exposed to modern necessities like television or penicillin, they couldn't imagine a world in which commercial flying was the norm. The list of innovations that Queen Elizabeth II was older than is rather long, much like Betty White's. FM radio Although it's hard to imagine, and radio used to be the norm, up until inventor Edwin Armstrong started hunting for a fix, and radio static was just a fact of life. Armstrong discovered the answer in 1933 with FM radio, but his groundbreaking creation was overshadowed by the prevalent and laughably inadequate AM radio. FM radio didn't become the standard for audio transmission until 1940, when Queen Elizabeth II was already a teenager. Nylon Nylon is in everything from toothbrushes to car parts, but that wasn't the case prior to 1938. For the first 12 years of Queen Elizabeth II's life, Women's stockings were made of silk or rayon. The former was expensive and flimsy. The latter was cheap and brittle. Sensing a void in the market, chemical company DuPont began searching for their new product. They gave lead researcher Charles Stein $25,000 a month and hired 25 renowned chemists to help his efforts. When nylon stockings finally went on sale on May 15, 1940, they were sold out of most locations by noon of that same day. DuPont's decade of dedicated research into a new fabric certainly paid off. Handheld calculators Calculators were the size of typewriters and as pricey as vehicles up until 1965. In order to put that in perspective, Queen Elizabeth II had held the throne for 12 years by 1965, when the handheld calculator was developed. Texas Instruments didn't design it to make calculators more widely available. Instead, they did it to make microchips more well-known. In 1967, the finished item, which weighed almost three pounds, was made public. Since then, they have made great progress. Chicken Nuggets Despite the fact that the concept of bite-sized chicken may not appear groundbreaking, Queen Elizabeth II would not have even been able to consume them for the first 37 years of her life. In 1963, graduate students and Cornell professor Robert Baker created the first batch of chicken nuggets. After World War II, the poultry business collapsed, and nuggets were only one of the many delicacies Baker developed to help farmers sell chicken. The Baker's nuggets were extremely well-liked decades before McDonald's even entered the nugget business. McDonald's tends to receive much of the credit for turning chicken nuggets into an American institution. Nuggets were scarce at the time they were sold. When they first started, Baker and his students could only supply five nearby supermarkets. But in the first six weeks they were in stores. They were able to sell 200 boxes each week. And the nugget craze only ramped up from there. Plastic bags. Despite attempts to ban them and the harm they cause to the environment, plastic shopping bags are a standard in supermarkets all over the world. However, they weren't always the preferred means for bringing groceries home from the store. Since plastic bags weren't even created until 1959, Queen Elizabeth II would have gone her whole first 33 years of life without ever having seen one. Play-Doh Even while Play-Doh can appear like a simple children's toy, it wasn't created until 1956, so Queen Elizabeth II most likely didn't use it when she was a youngster. The moldable putty was initially employed to remove smoke from wallpaper, however, the demand for a product that achieved that actually vanished after the majority of internal heating systems switched from coal to gas and electricity in the 1950s. Fortunately for Kutol, the business that produced the putty, someone thought to market the putty as a kid's toy. Thus, Play-Doh was created. Ballpoint pens. Have you ever tried using a fountain pen to write? It's tough. The ink needs to be changed about every two weeks. It takes forever to dry and you have to get the slant exactly so. However, using a fountain pen to write for the first 20 or so years of Queen Elizabeth II's life was pretty much the only choice. The first ballpoint pen was then marketed and sold in US retailers in 1945. The invention was so well liked that one shop, 
who sold the pens for $12.50 each, was able to sell 30,000 of them in the first week they were on the market. Microwaves In contrast to today, when 90% of US houses have a microwave, Queen Elizabeth II was a child. While developing magnetrons during World War II, engineer Percy LeBaron Spencer observed that the chocolate bar in his pocket had melted. Additional experiments with eggs and popcorn kernels demonstrated that food could be sufficiently heated by microwave radiation. By 1945, Spencer had discovered that a metal box was the ideal container for microwaves and had applied for a patent for his invention. But the cool device didn't truly catch on until the 1970s. Barcodes Joe Woodland originally came up with the concept of a barcode in 1949. After hearing that supermarkets needed a means to speed up the checkout process, despite the fact that Woodland had conceptualized and, in a sense, invented the barcode in the early 1950s, technology had not yet advanced sufficiently to implement his notion. Then, in the 1960s, the first lasers were created, making it possible to create functional barcodes, which had previously been impossible. However, the first barcodes were not regularly utilized by food stores until approximately 1976. Sliced Bread The first store to sell bread that had been automatically sliced was a bakery in Missouri in 1928, two years after the birth of Queen Elizabeth II. Even though we may take it for granted now, the concept of pre-sliced bread was strange and challenging to comprehend. The New York Times even published simple instructions on how to store sliced bread. However, by the time of World War II, sliced bread had become so ingrained in daily life that any attempt to outlaw it for military purposes was swiftly opposed by Americans all over the nation. In a few months, the prohibition was lifted. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe, like and comment for more content like this.